Now, nearly 48 hours after cameras captured the stunning collapse of Baltimore's Key Bridge, critical details are starting to come into focus. But none of the news, unfortunately, is positive, especially for the families of the men who were working on that bridge when it fell down. Today, divers were back in the waters of the Patapsco River, and federal investigators were on board the ship that slammed into that bridge. And there is word tonight the water may now be turning toxic. News Force Jackie Benson is live for us tonight in Baltimore once again. The NTSB just wrapping up a late night press conference. Jackie, what did you learn? Well, Jim, we now have new images of the NTSB investigators on board the ship Dolly this afternoon. We have a timeline, and we now know that hazardous materials from that cargo ship have leaked into the Patapsco River. One day after the disaster that destroyed the Key Bridge and left six construction workers who'd been on the bridge unaccounted for, Maryland Governor Westmore confirmed the bodies of two men have been recovered. They are identified as Alejandro Fernandez Fuentes, 35, and Dorlan Castillo Cabrera, 26. Today, we transitioned from search and rescue to recovery. We need to bring a sense of closure and comfort to the families. The head of the National Transportation Safety Board says investigators were able to board the dolly for the first time. She confirmed a breach of hazardous materials, both in containers still on board the cargo ship and containers in the water. He was able to identify 56 containers of hazardous materials. Uh, that's 764 tons of hazardous materials, mostly corrosives, flammables, uh, and some miscellaneous hazardous materials, class nine hazardous materials, which uh, would include lithium ion batteries. Some of the hazmat containers were breached uh, we have seen uh, shear on, or sheen, sorry, sheen on the um, waterway. Investigators also released a timeline of Tuesday morning's collision. It's based on preliminary data from the Dolly's Voyage Data Recorder, VDR, which they stress is less detail rich than the black box on an airplane. At 12.49 a.m., the ship departs from the Seagirt Marine Terminal and enters the channel. By 1.24, the ship is underway at 8 knots, about 9.2 miles per hour. At 1.24.59, onboard alarms begin sounding and the VDR goes out. 1.26.02, the VDR resumes. 1.26.39, the ship's pilot phones the Maryland Transportation Authority. He reports blackout of power and requests the assistance of tugboats. 1.27.04, the dolly drops anchor. 12725, the ship loses power approaching the key bridge. 12933, collision. Lights go out on the bridge. 12939, the pilot reports the bridge is down. The NTSB says its investigators have spoken to the ship's captain. They will question the two pilots tomorrow. Live in Dundalk, Jackie Benson, News 4. Boy, that timing really lays it out there. Jackie Benson, live in Baltimore. Thanks Thank so much, you, Jackie. Jackie. Now, as the hours and the days pass following this tragic collapse, many of the neighbors in that area will begin to wonder what's next for the Port of Baltimore and when will the Key Bridge be rebuilt? Well, these are daunting questions, even for officials at the very top. Yeah, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg said tonight he can't estimate yet when the Port of Baltimore might reopen, but he did note nearly $200 million of value comes through that port every day. Local lawmakers say that their first priority is getting the shipping lane back open and then focusing on rebuilding the bridge. Make no mistake about it, our top priority is to get the shipping lane open. We recognize that every day it's closed, the impact it has not just on Baltimore, in our economy, in the state of economy, but in our country and affects the global supply chain. Tonight, experts are saying it could take years to rebuild the Key Bridge, but the shipping channel from the Port of Baltimore, that major economic engine for the city, could be cleared in just months. We are concerned about the local economic impact with some 8,000 jobs directly associated with port activities. And we are concerned about implications that will ripple out beyond the immediate region because of the roles, uh, the, excuse me, because of the port's role in our supply chains. 
Officials believe rebuilding the key bridge could cost hundreds of millions of dollars. President Biden has promised the federal government will pay for it all. As the investigation continues and progress is made reopening the channel, stay with News 4. From supply chain impacts to job losses at the port, we're covering every angle of this disaster. So look for updates on air, online, and in the NBC Washington app.